So I've been getting a lot of questions about how authentication works and how I've been using authentication for my full stack applications. So in this uh, bit of a different type of video, I just wanted to cover how I've been using authentication, how authentication works so that hopefully you can use these on your sites. So currently I'm building this uh, SaaS product, which is basically a platform for new coders to access. And I've been putting in this login system. So when the user logs in, We've got the Google authentication. We've got GitHub authentication where when the user clicks, they are logged in via their GitHub. And here I've displayed data. So their user's name, the uh, email that they use for their GitHub and much more. Now there's also the login system. So I already have one pre-planned. So there's Aries at gmail.com. And if you put in the password of hopefully this works, the user would get a confirmation email. And I have not set that up yet, so we still have to do that. Um, well, I still have to do that, but basically that is the authentication system. Now, how this works is complicated, but also simple. So I'm actually gonna go over the UI first. All I did was in my components page of my next JS application, I have a special folder for all the UI things. So this page is the login form. And in this page, we have everything from where we're sending our data to the actual looks of the button. So in here we have the card wrapper and within here we have things such as the form field of email. So this right here and the form field of password. Now, if you don't know what like form field form item is, it's a, a library called Shad CN. It's just a third party tool where it makes designing a little bit easier. So I'll just show you real quick. So you have access accessibility just to make it a little bit more easy to manage. And essentially what I did was I downloaded that and I implemented it into my app. And now if you're wondering how the functionalities work and how I implemented like the things at the bottom here, um, it's actually quite simple, okay? Uh, essentially, I use this thing called Zod, which is just a way to, I guess, send data. That's how I usually use it. But basically, in my login schema, which we will talk about in a second, I have two fields. I have the email and the password. I'm trying to simplify this because I know it's a little bit confusing. There's the email and the password. And essentially, what we're telling this resolver, essentially this over here, we're telling it, to wait for the data that's about to come in here, take that data and post it in a database. So let's say we put in, uh, let's actually go to the register. The register is the exact same thing, but with a name. Let's just say landing, let's call it um, hi to at gmail.com and then one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? We'll register that and it'll say confirmation email sent, right? But where is that being sent? So, and how's this being checked in the first place? So if we actually head over to our uh, database or not database, excuse me, the, where is it at? I totally lost it. The login schema over here is where the magic happens. So this is essentially where we're, we're, we're calling the data. So you know how we had the email and the password? Well, over here we have the email and the password. Okay. And essentially the data here is being checked in the login schema. And then what we're doing with that data is posting it on Prisma DB. Okay. Prisma DB, DB is a database that stores a bunch of things, but I use it mostly for authentication and it is one of my favorites. So if we refresh this page over here, we will currently have eight users. So these are all the emails that I use. So Joe, Joe, Joe. And at the bottom here, you can see that we stored the email, the name of landing, and we still are waiting on a bunch more things. And again, we're using auth.js. I, I just want to clear something up. Prisma DB is the database. So it's where we store things. Auth.js is the actual authentication system that we use. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Now, if you're wondering how we are storing it into Prisma DB, we can head over to Prisma and over here is again, everything that we need. So we have the name and we have the email that we took from these and we're posting it on here. So again, here we have ID, name, email, password. These are generated by Prisma DB, by the way, 
So I don't actually have to physically do this. So here's the name, here's the email, here's the e email verified, here is image and a bunch more things. So as you can see, it's actually quite simple. And actually let's log in so I can show you a bunch more things. So now that we're logged in and you kind of have an understanding about how the thing works, um, I wanted to show you the token aspect of this because if you don't know, when the user logs in, right? Like how does the computer know that it's you, not someone else? And how does it know that it's like you that's logged in? Well, it's actually quite simple. If we head over to the actions area here, I can, I guess I could show you this. I'm Essentially, we use things called tokens. And again, in as simple of a way possible, each user has a token or ID. So again, if we head over to Prisma, here we have the ID. It's usually this similar. So either they're gonna have an ID or a token. And essentially, the let's just call it ID because it's a lot simple. The ID is like your social security number. This tells the computer that this is the specific user because we don't want to get them confused. And essentially this is attributed with every single aspect of this user's email and name so that we know it's the user and that this belongs to them. So if we head over then to like, let's say the settings page, when we displayed the data, we know that this is their name, their email and like the account type because their user ID is this. Okay. That is how we are identifying each person and how we can use different things. So in the sign up, right, I put my name as Nizar Abizahar for this specific account. And if we head over to the road roadmap page of the application, here we have Nizar Abizahar. And because we attributed the token with that, we know that this is my name. And if we head over then to the roadmap page, something cool would actually happen, I'll actually show you, is this. So essentially we're getting the session. So essentially the data from this user we're displaying the user's name. And because we have the user, we're able to display his name. So that is how we are displaying the name, guys, okay? Um, I know this is a little confusing, but essentially we're taking the data that they used to log in. This is as simple as possible. We're taking the data that they used to log into our application and we're displaying it here. So again, if I log out, if we head over to the roadmap page, there's nothing there because there's no data to show for that user. But once we log in, we're able to display that data because we have that data that is attributed specifically to that user. Now I wanted to cover one more thing, maybe to clarify, it is the O-authentication. So basically all O-auth is, is third party services. It could be Google, GitHub, it could be much more, but those two are like the most popular things. And they are methods of signing in in a faster and safer way. And now if we head over to our components again and go to social buttons, here is where everything happens. All we did here was we used a sign in from next auth. It's like an import from the next authentication and we implemented Google or GitHub. Okay. And basically I don't want to make it too confusing but these two take us to links. So let's say we, we press Google. It takes us to the Google OAuth link, which we set up using the Google, uh, Google OAuth. So Google OAuth, so the Google Cloud Console. And essentially we set everything up here and we displayed it, as we set it up like, you know, outside of this. So basically what we did was we connected our Google and set up the, the GitHub and we displayed it here via this. So we set up the Google, this, the GitHub and the sign in. And if we actually head over to provider, I guess I could show you the things over here. Uh, yes, over here. So this is the back end. You may be a little bit confused, but that's, it's, it's fine. So we basically just put in the providers of our application as GitHub and Google, AKA this and this. And we obviously had to get like some uh, secret IDs and client IDs that we had to set up outside of this because it is private. And basically we just connect our Google and GitHub accounts saying that it's us and that we're using this platform and that these two are ways of signing in. All right, so I think I covered everything then. Essentially, in summary then, we are just using 
the email and password, sending that data to the backend that is verified using their ID. We are also using Google Auth and GitHub Auth as a method of doing that as well. We store stuff in a database and we are using Auth.js as the method of authentication. And I hope this video sort of clarified some things about authentication. I know I didn't cover things that well and not much in depth, but again, this was just like sort of an introductory way of doing things. So I hope you, you know, understand a little bit about how this works, the front end and the back end. Um, it's actually quite simple once you get the hang of it, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this and happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.